Hey, what's up, everybody? My name's Joe K. It's Joe K Music, and welcome to another day in the underground. I know you guys have been waiting for a while for this, and one of the most infamous projects to hit the underground in a long time, written in blood. AWAX, thanks for coming on, man. My pleasure, man. Appreciate it, Joe. Yeah, no problem at all, man. I'm glad to have you on. Let's, let's dive right into this thing, man. I want to take people back, though. I want to talk about how did this project originally get started? Like, what was that conversation like with ISO? Was it ISO coming to you? Was it you coming to ISO? Like, how did this thing get started, man? We had did some music some years back. He did a couple beats for an artist named Young Bop from Sacramento. And I knew Bop and through Smig, and we had all hooked up in two years of just being affiliated with different people from Sacramento. So ISO was like friends with Bop and I did some songs with Bop on ISO beats. So I had, we always like knew each other was and then we had talked about doing music or something some in the, like the DM some years back or something, but I just wasn't running my social media correctly and wasn't on top of it. So when I went away for a little bit and came back out and like tried to start I really had quit smoking weed, so I tried to start being more business-like with my um, with my DMs and whatnot. So I went through the DMs and started communicating back, and then ISO was talking, and we, it led to us doing a song. And we did the song, and we just thought the song came out good, and the chemistry came out good, like how the sound and how the sound of the end result came out. So we did a couple more songs and just started just doing songs randomly. But we were just doing them like day by day, like every day we do a song, do a song, and then before we knew it, we had a couple songs. We were like, let's just turn this to an album. We we speak a lot, so it just came naturally. It wasn't like yeah. we were just sitting there like, hey, let's just do a whole album. We started working. We, we, it just organically was just happening because we talk on we'll talk on the phone for two hours. We'll talk on the phone about all kind of just regular shit and people we know like. And that he's from way over in the Midwest, and I'm from way over here on the West Coast, and we know all the same people, a lot of the same crowd, where we actually know it personally. So that that would like help the that help the conversation and and just mm-hmm. us get the ball rolling on everything. And I feel like when we start kicking it and talking to each other on the daily, it feel like we've known each other for years kind of stuff. And ISO real humble too. He, he a real, like, um, he's not like a typical artist with a big ego or like, you know, talk to my manager and all that kind of shit. You know what I mean? Like, he just down to earth. And ISO like also was familiar with my catalog and whatnot. And, and that kind of just eased everything into it. So the music half of it was, that's the easy part. We just yeah. was always building. So it really wasn't like no idea. And then we just was just sitting through it. And then we music. had a whole, <laughs> yeah, we had a whole album by the time we even discussed the title, we had a whole album worth of material. Wow. Well, was this, uh, was this kind of like an outcome of uh, being cooped up from COVID and stuff or? For sure. Like- Okay. For sure that like because typically in my career I put out one to two projects a year uh, for my as long as I've been rapping so um, this year I already put out like four projects and I got another two or three coming out that are just all this one year so I really because of the COVID my output as far as being a, I just lock up in the studio the whole time and just come out with it. I try to make a song a day. So that's usually my goal. If I get a song a day, I can have albums done in two weeks. My output's just crazy. And I could justify doing music like that because it's not being, it's not repetitive music. I could pick different tempos. I could pick different types of beats and my ideas aren't all just the same vocabulary and the same exact bars being recycled. I'm, 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 I'm able to be versatile and actually show my versatility when I rap. And, Rapping with like ISO in, in particular brings a whole different style out of me that I, I never would have rapped in a million years the way I'd be rapping on the songs with ISO if we didn't do the project or it, if we don't continue making music, the kind of songs we make, it just ain't going to come out of me somewhere else. Yeah, it's it's interesting you say that because I, I hear something very similar actually from him when he's on tracks with you too, you know, like you yeah. guys kind of feed off of each other's energy and each other's mm-hmm. like 
like styles and stuff. And and it's cool when you guys came together. Like when I heard, I like, dude, ISO has been killing it for a while. You know what I mean? Like you've been killing yeah. it for a while. You guys both have established your, your own fan bases. You guys have your own styles, but when you guys come together, like it just, it sounds so organic and it sounds like it's not forced, you know, like, uh, I've, I've seen so many other times where, where you have different, different labels and different managers coming together. Like, let's throw these two guys together, you know, like it's going to be a great <laughs> song and let, let's do this. And then like, it's just kind of forced. This yeah. really, especially from what you just described, happened really organically, which is cool to see these days. Yeah, and we, we, you know, with a good group project or a good collaboration, artists push each other to bring the best out of each other. It's like, it's like a friendly competition. Usually whoever raps second, he got the advantage. It's like batting, batting that third spot, that cleanup. You mm -hmm. got the better odds for the RBIs, <laughs> you know? So yep. it's like we we got some of that going too. Some some good friendly competition. Boy, he'd be I should be saying some shit on these songs. Like you really, <laughs> if, if you listen, then you gonna hear like, man, this motherfucker rapped his ass off, man. Mm -hmm. But the the styles merging, it's like we we find a like a um, a way to attack a beat, and we do it collectively. We both put our own twist on it, and it just, it come out dope, to, in my opinion, because it's just, it's a different sound. There's not a, 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 there's not a real, any other artist that you, or any other collaborations that you could be like, oh, it sounds just like this. It's not comparable yeah. to anything else. Who, so I, I always like to give uh, some, some light to the, to, to the beat makers and the producers too, man. Like, what, what did that look like when you guys were working together, like throughout this project? Was it like a guy you knew that you were getting beats from and you were passing like ISO, just a bunch of like, like tracks, like, Hey, check out this beat and like agreeing on beats. Would you just drop a verse on something and send it over? Would he, you know, like get songs that he had like beats laying around that he'd use? Like what, what did that look like when you guys were making this? We we don't we be on the phone a lot, so we'll 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 text each other uh, like video messages and stuff stuff we record, just little ideas, and we'll Facetime and play something on Facetime. Or we'll email a new idea we did, and just just for input sometimes, not even just to do the song. It'll be like, oh, this one's for uh, uh, let get on this one and see which ones you're feeling. So it wasn't like. We did, all right, here goes a song, you do that, you do that. Like, mm. we'll send options too. It'll be like five of them and we'll be like, yeah, these three, we're gonna, let, let's do these three together, or whatever. It, it, and it just comes like that. And so, and the producers, I use a, I got a little core team of producers that I use for my, my solo work and ISO does a lot of his own production. So he produced a lot of it and I just incorporated my, typical producers that I would use when I'm creating a project of my own and we just merged the two together like that. So ISO is cold on them fucking beats. He he does it all. Yeah. But that he he gotta do double work on some of them songs. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure, man. Um yeah. so so you guys spent this time, you know, you're kind of from what you're describing, your your output's absolutely crazy. COVID's got you guys locked up. You guys are passing songs back and forth over time eventually you see like you kind of got enough songs where you're like hey let me just make this a project right so exactly so you you, you get to that point um now everybody knows the drama about what happened like when it dropped right like it, yeah. it was shooting up the charts um all of a sudden it comes out that written in blood is getting taken down from all platforms what led up to that point and how are you feeling in that moment when this project you had been spending all this time on is just kind of poof gone <laughs> just gone i it, it's 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 definitely like someone kicked your sandcastle over on the beach or something like it's like uh it, and it was blindsided completely blindsided we had no like it, we weren't forewarned it was going to happen like all the all the um, even talks of taking it down came less than 48 hours before the actual release. And it was already geared, it was already like in iTunes and all the yeah. distribution platforms by then. And from our end, like the way we deal with our distributors, not like we just call a phone number up there and things 
you snap a finger and it just disappears or it moves this way or that way. Like we got some pool with our distributors and we uh, with, with Empire and we can make calls and be like, yo, we want this to come out at this time on this date. But going the reverse way, it's not that simple. It's like you got to send an email and go through the proper channels to get something removed down. And it just it doesn't typically happen on the day you want it to and you're not in control of it like that. It takes time for different mm-hmm. platforms to move. Some Like iTunes may move at a different pace than Spotify taking it down or mm-hmm. vice versa. And, and and that's, it's not just um, iTunes and, and Spotify. It's all the platforms. Travis' first time hearing it about the album wasn't through me or ISO. Like, um, oh. When we he heard about it through the distributor through Ingrooves, oh, okay. so when Universal lawyers and Ingrooves were coming at him about it, and we didn't go to Trav before we put the album on, saying could we get approval from Strange or anything like that. We were thinking it's just an independent album. Oh, okay, album. so so it's, I th- I think that's important that we talk about this a little bit because in 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 fairness to Travis because. Look, when this when this happened, like and all mm-hmm. this all this drama started kicking off, like I saw fans from both sides coming for Travis's head. Like they for they sure. weren't they weren't having any of this. Like and, and you know, I like I remember obviously, you know, the the post that you had put up and like obviously you're frustrated at the time. Um we'll we'll kind of talk about how you worked through that, you know, a little bit later on here, but like obviously in that moment you're super frustrated because all your hard work's like taken off the first place that everybody's mind goes to is like travis is over here just taking stuff down like without warning <laughs> like doesn't care about yeah. us like like and then and that kind of like just fuels this like mob right like this mob is just coming for travis and i i probably look I probably contributed to, to that a little bit too. I take full responsibility for any part that I played in that as well. But people were steaming, and I, I want I want you to go into a little bit here about like why why was the album taken down? The album was taken down because it, we didn't take it to Travis and Strange, and ISO didn't read his contract in in complete as far as the parameters of him doing works for hire or any kind of uh, work outside of his strange contract. His, his contract's fairly new and he didn't fine tooth comb it. And it, it, a lot of contracts consist of legal jargon anyway. You could read it, a typical person could read a record contract and still not know what the hell it says. Wording in contracts, there's like stuff between the lines. You have to actually have a real attorney read it to you, which it, it, you could still do that and still not understand it. That's why a lot of artists just hire lawyers to do law- legal work and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Like we're rappers, we're not we're not law school graduates. Yeah. So ISO didn't actually understand all the fine print in his contract with Strange and and what it consisted of, what what is it, his actual deal consisted of. So that was a probably the biggest um, contrib- contributor to that whole little fiasco right there and that's not trying to throw ice on the bus or anything that's just normal yeah and and he spoke on it too i mean he you know he came out and like basically said exactly that like you know he he came out with a instagram live video like shortly after all this stuff started kicking off to kind of tell the fans like hey just hold tight like you know look this is hang in there yeah hang, hang in there like we're trying to work things out like we didn't go through the proper channels to get the proper paperwork to get the proper, you know, clearances to be able to make stuff, you know, work in the way that we needed to work from a business side. So, like, I, yeah. I, I thought that was a, I thought that was a big move from ISO, um, you know, at the time to come out and like, kind of put some of that on his shoulders too, and because yeah. because fans were fans were pissed, you know, they they wanted the project, and uh, yeah. when it comes down to it, like it wasn't necessarily Travis just being like a tyrant it was hey we have two different distributors here for two different well, artists and we gotta and, we gotta work this and out. the way the way it went the way it went down was like we didn't hear from travis we heard from universal or in in groups legal team and lawyers just started talking tough legal terms and 
we start talking back, like they're coming, like shut this down. It needs to do this. It needs to it, it not come out. And we're like, hold on. We're, like, what are you talking about? Like, w- this is the first time we've heard of any contract. Like me and ISO, we did all this music and we didn't discuss like, hey, what is your, can I see your strange contract and read through it? What is your actual, like that never came to mind. In our heads and me and ISO's heads, like, we're just underground. If we just throw it out, it's like a mixtape we're putting on iTunes or something, and we're putting mm-hmm. out through distribution. It's, it's, it's beneath anything strange does. They don't even recognize us. Uh, in our heads, we weren't even going to be a blip on the radar. This is just something we were doing, merging our fan, his fan base that he's built with my fan base and just putting good music together and letting them enjoy that. We didn't think yeah. we were going to get the results we got out of it, just dropping it the way we were dropping it at the time. Yeah. So that that was a huge contributing factor to the whole mess too. And then once the e- legal email started going, it was like, hey, take this down, that's our artist. It was like, hold, hold the fuck on. Like, we ain't, this is the first we've heard of any contracts, anything, we're not even on that kind of shit. And mm-hmm. the, if the, there was zero communication with Travis to start with, like, mm. um, even like we just didn't I, in my eyes it was like if i go to travis my, when me and travis did talk one of the things he said was like why didn't you just come to me like well i i i'm i know iso that's who you're signed to how does it sound if i backdoor him like i i'm if i only way i'm going through going to get in contact with you is telling him call you and y'all yeah. both call me but i'm not just gonna go on a dm behind his back and then here, uh, check, Trav, check, uh, I'm AWACS, I'm doing some stuff for ISO. You're not going to yeah. hear it like that. Like, it, it would have been disloyal, a, a disloyal move or a backbiting, underhanded move, in my opinion, even trying to get contact like yeah, that. It's... And the goal, the goal was never, uh, how can we get AWACS to put music or team up with strange? There was never no kind of thought process like that. Like, I, I've been so entrenched in my own label and doing all mm-hmm. my own things that it wasn't even like you you could have told me this it would have been the end results a year ago like i'll get the hell out of here and that's <laughs> no way no way you know what i mean yeah, like, yeah i just had too much going on my own thing and i wasn't even even considering even being in a group with anybody like i've been a solo artist my whole career and i, I, I enjoy being a solo artist and i've done group projects and collaborative efforts but with ISO, it's been really like the it, it's it's kind of like um, effortless. We just are able to knock out a lot of music and get a lot of work done, and it's easy to work with ISO. We don't get caught up in the small things. Yeah. We're both able to look forward and have our goals and just achieve them musically and what we want to do. We, we know where we're trying to go with the music. Yeah, the... and we know the impact. Like both of us have songs that are geared toward like like people from fucked up past and different like um mental health issues and PTSD issues and just a bunch of different topics that our music uh, uh, touches people in those in those areas of life and that that's another thing that our fan bases are similar in that even though the music we produce is different on our own so that's a that's a huge part of it too where we're able to recognize that and say all right let's let's come together something like that and and it made it a no-brainer as far as us working together too like we 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 talk about all that all the small stuff and not just the songs we think about it in totality yeah i i think i think this is going to be really interesting because now so now that you have this uh this it, it goes up entertainment deal you know powered by strange music um you know, which I, I want to get into a little bit of that. Like what, you know, obviously, dude, from my perspective, and I think from a lot of people's perspective, they already knew you had a finished product. Like your product was done, packaged up and shipped out. Like it, it was yeah. in our, in the, in, in our minds as like fans, it was done. It was a done deal. You already had videos. Like, you, you know what I mean? Like stuff was done. So yeah. something must've been put on the table for, for both sides to make this something that's going to be mutually beneficial for, for both parties to, to pursue. Right. Like, 
yeah. the buzz on this project because of all the BS, like that stuff aside, like I I know it probably sucked to go through for both people, you know, all parties involved in that, but the outcome from all the 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 eyes that are on this project now, I think it's a real opportunity, um, you know, for this to be a very top notch underground maybe even beyond the underground type of project. You know what I mean? Yeah. When we started uh, our conversation about the project, when I actually talked to Travis, like, because I was putting the project out through my own channels and whatnot, I like on the business end, like I was pretty much responsible for all that. So when I did discuss it with Travis, I came in with like, like the conversation was like, like whatever percentage on my end, it was like, what percentage you guys want, whatever percent you want, I'll just attach it. And that was another thing I, I wasn't getting when it first hit too, is I was just like, why do we have to just jump right into it, take the album down? Like, tell me the percentage you want, I'll give it to you. There's been no checks, no money's been generated or nothing like that. But that's when I, that's made it all make sense that, it wasn't about a percentage or anything like tra Travis is getting calls from other people and we need to discuss and agree as a unit where this project comes out and what the home of this project is on the distribution level. So that was a bigger uh, issue than any percentages. Travis, when me and Travis actually had a conversation, it was like, I was like, what do you want? Take a hundred percent of the pro uh, of the proceeds i don't even care at this point and he was saying i, I don't want zero i don't want nothing so we were mm. both not interested in it wasn't about a dollar sign for either one of us at that point too it became the fans it, it's kind of like medicine for the fans like they want their you, you you gave it to them and you took it back now we're all getting yelled at let's just fix this and keep going because this isn't working out we can't it was to the point i couldn't post anything on any videos or social media or anything, all the comments was the same comment and everybody echoing the same feeling. So I couldn't be, I was, everyone was in a circle, like, what are we supposed to do? We're all at a standstill now because no one could, could do anything or even talk about anything else they're doing. It all gets overshadowed by this. So we, we everybody knew we had to come to some kind of a conclusion about it, but once I got to talk to Travis, he's so reasonable and down to earth. It's not like he's looking for a money move or anything like that. He's, he wasn't just being an asshole or flexing his power or anything like that. He just was like wanting to be in the know and wanting to be it, it, wanting it to all um, not not get in the way of what he's doing with ISO and Strange on his release schedule because ISO has the actual um release schedule for his solo projects on strange and touring and whatnot he doesn't travis's big thing is when they got that going things can't you can't just run a whole nother game plan on the side of when you do that and it makes complete sense so once we got in communication and everybody thought the whole situation through in totality and looked took a step back and looked at it that's when we started uh having a conversation about how to put the album out and how to move forward and get this album back out and i, I was asking all the other questions like me and i saw like man could we put out it, once we figured out how to put the project out and we agreed where the home would be for it as far as distribution and taking it to in groups universal sticking with the the strange side of the distribution instead of the uh just my typical pyrex side because I'm in a non-exclusive contract with Empire, so I could I, I'm free to do whatever I want. And the Strange deals is structured different. He's, he's an exclusive Strange artist, which is a big difference in how my deal is structured. So it was easy for us to do it like that, and then um, to just swap over to there. And then once we figured that out, it, it, we we started discussing what could we do on it in different ways with Powered by Strange. Uh, 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 it goes up and different different um different services we could use from mm -hmm. strange and different like there's a there's levels to doing it i didn't trav didn't just say you got to put it out this way and do it this he trav gave me options it was like look yeah. there's these doors bro i'm gonna there's this door that door that door like what do you see for the thing so we we sat back and 
weighed all the decisions and then said, look, this is what we want for it. And me and ISO had, I had an idea. And then we we're like, look, can we just make this a, a group project? We'll give it a group name that we, we like, and then we're just going to do more albums like this. So it's not just a one-off project, one and done. Oh, it's nice. going to be something that we're doing repeatedly. So we, we, we could, potentially put out one or two projects a year just as the brazy as the brazy bunch and still have our solo career running side by side and then we could do touring together for both projects and just be able to work a lot and yeah. and I, that's what I'm trying to do I, like we're capable of making a ton of music and if I'm not making music I might be playing Fortnite or something and that's not <laughs> yeah. that's not going to cut no money nope like I'm like, man, let's just maximize output, maximize good music, and see if it, see what the fans' uh, opinions is of it once we drop it. So that's how that's how it all came about. And like, um, we're still earning earning out the release date. I should find it out in a few days, but it's just being worked in into and calculated by the strange release schedule and what they got going. So, so do you think then? I mean, at, at this point should fans expect um not just a a re-release of the project but are there going to be more songs are there going to be more videos is there going to be any like specific merch and like a tour or anything like what what can fans expect in the future related to this project yeah so that was another thing trav um off you know trav is a master of all that stuff strange and tech mm-hmm. and travis they've been doing they, they've mastered that game and they've been doing it for a long time. So basically um, we're, he gave us the option to do it all. To, and we took that option. I was, we're, we're going to be doing touring and albeit limited touring with the, with, with me and ISO. So it doesn't, you know, the tech tour has been scheduled for a while. So I, I, ISO and tech are doing a huge tour right now. So it's not, our dates can't, um, come too close to those dates or anything it's all got to just be factored in correctly so we're going to do as much as we can well right now we've been working on a ton of music to just make the album have a a whole nother side to the album that people haven't already got because it kind of was like a spoiler alert you got having the album out and then taking back so we added a lot of new music to the album. We added new videos to the album. Nice. And then we, we got merchandise to come with it. We're going to be doing a couple shows here and there and, and just promoting it. And then I'm going to probably be coming to as many dates as I can for the big upcoming tour. So I might be a special guest on a few of them or I'll just be there supporting for Tech Tour and ISO nice. when they when they hit this next tour. So I'm, I'm going to be around a lot. You could... If if you're gonna be pulling up to a strange show or anything, so you'll definitely see me. We'll say what's up, what all that kind of stuff. So I'm a, I'm gonna be around and just um showing my support. And I, I'm just I like I I never I I've always been a fan of tech. Man, I used to be in jail when I was a kid and listening to techno music and whatnot. I've always been a fan of music before I even actually was a musician. So hmm. like it's just and tech so humble too, man. Like I I talked to ISO so much, I felt like I kind of knew him before I actually met him. But when you meet him and you actually uh, see how him and Trav are, it's like it's like mind blowing, man. A lot of the rich people I have met and people that are successful in life overall just have certain attitudes and be extra cocky and had them them crazy rich egos and be doing extra shit with their money and trying to like always show off be weird like not weird but just like trying to uh, throw it out there and flex that shit like there ain't none of that from them man they're real down to earth and just like humble people and it's just like refreshing just to be around people like that that's cool yeah that's dude i i I really appreciate this like candy conversation too because I, i feel like over you know the last several months um there's been a lot of stuff happening uh strange related activity going on and uh, a lot of fans have been paying attention to it and i think over the last few months in particular you know there's been a a certain image painted of um you know travis in particular and and people at strange music in particular and I, i think it's a really cool perspective to get from somebody that isn't 
you know, or wasn't, I guess, really on the inside of that camp. And yeah. you're really, you're really, I, I guess, kind of giving us a peek behind the curtain of like, what is it really like, you know, working with Travis but, and Tech and all them? You yeah, know I mean? Tra- I speak for Travis. Like, I, I don't know. Um, I see all that too. And I've seen all that before I actually got to interact with Travis, you know, and I, I don't want to give too much. I, I don't want to give any of his intricacies to his label out, like as far as with his relationships with artists or anything. Just uh, from my being around and everything, like he, uh, all the artists, like he, because Travis isn't on uh, on the blogs or on any of the mm-hmm. um, interviews much or anything like that. Nobody like speaks on his behalf. But if he were on them, nobody would say those kind of things. Just because there's no communication, people could with the fans and Travis as far as on the intricacies and how he deals with his artists they're able to assume the worst about him all the time. And from my being around, I could just sum it up and say it's actually the opposite. Like he's got great relationships with pretty much every artist that ever left Strange and he's in close, like he supports all their moves and sometimes he's actually helping them without anybody knowing too. Like he's Mm -hmm. just behind the scenes helping them start their own labels or do things that they want to do on their own. And Every artist is different, obviously, that has dealt with mm-hmm. Strange, but pretty, uh, pretty much uh, all of the artists in him that left are on the up and up. Like, it's just not, you know, sometimes it's just a good to just be yeah. behind yeah. the scenes or whatever reason. However, they do their business is how they do it. But I can say all the, oh, the backlash, like you were saying about people saying, oh, Trav does this, or he's chasing artists off Strange. and just buying cars like man that is the furthest from the mm. truth that, that you could possibly even it's a it's a huge reach like travis is not just um, he's not just in music he's an actual mogul and he has different uh he makes it money from tons of different areas so counting his pockets you're definitely out of line number one if you're a grown-ass man or of any such that's a huge red flag is the person who's talking it from a fan's perspective and just assuming that every artist that doesn't continue to put out with Strange, like there's a tons of, ton mm-hmm. of reasons somebody could not work with a record label. It could be the artist mm-hmm. choice. It could be the label choice. It could be a mutual uh, a decision made on both party ends. Like every artist is a, is a different scenario, but right. just assuming you know the particulars to those relationships on, on one end or the other is just again you, you're doing too much as a fan but sometimes it's like i equate it to like um a great quarterback like aaron Rodgers wants to trade right now from green that's, Bay. What, that's what i'm talking that. about that's what i'm talking about you, i don't know if you know you, but i'm in wisconsin you know? so you know Packers all See? day, man. <laughs> if he ends up going to Denver, oh, you'll be no. fucking heartbroken. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. And it's the manager's fault. Packers. It is the manager's yeah. fault. I don't care what happened behind the scenes. <laughs> Whoever's the boss of the Green Bay Packers, those are the bastards that let this happen. See, so, I mean, to your point, <laughs> fair or you not. Too <laughs> man. Yeah. Like, so that, that's how I equate it. I, I look at it like, the strange fans are like Packers cheeseheads, man. They're, yeah. they're fiercely loyal and they, they like it a certain way, man. But they don't get to negotiate Aaron Rodgers' contract at the end of the day. And it's really not not their place to get too uh, in depth in those conversations. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it. it's, a good, it's a good point, man. It's a good point. And I, I think, too, like kind of like what you're referring to before, like it it is a lot of perception, right? Um, mm-hmm. People speculate. I mean, Look, I, I do an underground hip hop vlog. I've spent my time speculating about things and talking about things that I half know about. Like, absolutely, you know, no, no doubt about it. Yeah. And and I think it is. It's always really easy to instantly go to the the boss and blame the boss. You know, um, yeah. You know, at sure. the at the end of the day, and sometimes there's things that are happening behind the scenes that. Um, you know, whether it's an artist that, I mean, honestly, look at the industry right now, the music industry in particular, it's a ever evolving industry. And I think that this deal with Strange is kind of evidence of that. Like the fans spoke, they brought the torches and the pitchforks, but they spoke and, yeah, they and spoke. Travis helped, you know, you guys both came to the table together 
and you're making it happen. And in my opinion, if all, if everybody that's watching this right now, if you had anything to say about written in blood, if you're one of the people that were commenting, give us written in blood, you know, making all kinds of crazy threats and stuff on Facebook and social media and to every member of Travis's family and all the strange music artists and AWACS posts, like my posts, like everybody's posts that was talking about it. If you're not going out there and financially supporting this project after all the crap you've been talking <laughs> I I don't I'm ashamed. You're, I'm ashamed. I'm yeah. shutting down the vlog. I'm done with all y'all. But I, <laughs> I I'm just I'm just saying, like I, I think that this is one of the rare the rare times because you know, people get shelved projects get shelved all the time for numerous amounts of reasons, right? This is one of those few times where there's been such an outrage over a project. I haven't seen something like this in a long time. But there was such an outrage about this project that it's like both both teams had to acknowledge that and be like, I, well, I can't just let this opportunity like just float on by. Like, let's give the people yeah. what they want. You know what I mean? And it's happened. Let's, so let's see what becomes of it. Like yeah. let, we we all agreed on it, man. It, it, it's really like it's kind of surreal how it all came about too. Like I, none of it was planned. So every time we had a new conversation or uh, uh, talk about something else it was like yeah let's do this it, it, nothing was thought through and it just all happened organically actually and it, it's really just um it's humbling and, and refreshing man, to be in a situation like this and I'm, I'm real optimistic about it too but I, I you know I have vast knowledge of the underground and and putting out my own albums for so long and doing my own merchandise and being able to just take the knowledge that I've already gained from being in and doing it all on my own for so long and being able to go through the strange headquarters and see how their operation works and put the put the the two together and merge it and be able to see my own visions for things I'm doing with them and on my own aside from them like it, I have a lot of possibilities and it's just like um it, it's pretty much limitless how far we could take it and how far we could go with it putting out merchandise that are just geared for the brazy bunch aside from King ISO's own merch line and my own merch lines and, and clothing lines and things we're into like Travis and tech are pretty much is the cream of the underground crop that it gets no bigger than them on the underground and they've took it as to the top as far as you could go with the underground and they're not even done they're still doing a ton of work and mm -hmm. putting in that work to keep it going too and it's a it's great it's like great role models for me and iso business wise too and it, great mentors to have behind us and, and showing us different things and different ways to look at it from how we've been able to do it on our own so it, it's just a lot of room for growth in the situation and everyone's optimistic and enthusiastic about it so it's just a, a good scenario to be in for everybody and um like you said too earlier like the fan support like man we're putting a lot of music on, adding a lot of music to the album, and we might take one song off or something for the people that did get the early one to have like a, something like a little gem or something. But aside from that, it's going to be a lot of new music. And me and ISO are, are, are really, um, we're, we're picking the right songs for this. We're like trying to get some big stuff. Like we we took a bigger approach as far as how we look at it and trying to go further with it. So. We're just tightening some things up on the album, and we we're pretty confident everyone's going to be pleasantly surprised with it. You, you know, you know what I and probably a lot of other fans would love to see, and I'm sure, I'm sure we're we're holding on to some surprises here. But uh, I'd love to see a Tech Nine feature on the album, man. I'm just, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just saying. <laughs> it, I I ain't gonna speak on them on this album, but it, it's it's gonna happen in the works. You're gonna hear me ice on Tech and some music real soon. Um, like the only like the only hold up on that could potentially be the time constraints because yeah. tech's time is all like tech is a real machine with this shit. Like he he'll, mm. he'll rehearse for weeks on end for a new show, and he every little detail of his career he puts a ton of work in behind the scenes to be able to pull it off. So sometimes we gotta like just take back door, but who knows it it. it 
it may we may be able to swing something off by then, but if not, we'll, that's gonna happen real soon. So be patient with us. And Absolutely. Me and ISO. Soon as we get this album done, like I'm talking ISO in the let's take a, a studio on on the road with us for tour and let's record more in between. Like I'm talking about working on the off on the off time too. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do my best to keep it all going and get as much out of me and ISO's working together till we find some songs that actually is, is gonna be some we're, we're really looking for some singles or some some big songs that could really impact people in, 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 from all over the world type shit. Mm -hmm. So we're working, man, and we got a lot of plans about to unfold, man. So appreciate everybody though. It's a minute less, everybody speaking up. And I re I'm really excited, me and I so was excited to see how this album is received once we get it back out there. Like, it's like putting out a whole new album with the album we already dropped and people already liked. So it's kind of like, mm -hmm. we're thinking it's only going to go one way and it's mm -hmm. only going to be took it as better yeah yeah so we're, i we're, i agree man i i mean like like i said if people don't come out and support this thing now after all this crap everyone <laughs> went through like we got we got some more problems than we even know but yeah, yeah. I mean, I, i'm i'm happy i'm happy that it's out or about to be out um and you know i'm, I'm really hoping that this that this could be a game changer for everybody so um, I'm excited for it. I know you're probably excited for it to officially be kicking off and get a release date and everything. And I know we'll hear we'll hear about that soon. In in the meantime, you've been pumping out like tons of projects, man. Like I I, I think I said earlier on in the in the episode here we were talking. I don't remember, but I kind of was a I was a late member to Team AWAX, and all I've seen since joining in the party has been project after project after project and you got your clothing line like where should people be going to find your music buy it stream it do whatever you want them to do with it get the merch where should they be going for all this for the all of my merchandise i got a clothing line called pyrexclothing.com and that's www.pi E R X clothing, like it sounds.com. And that's where all the merch is going from. And the merch has been doing real good as far as with the clothing line. So um, I have a CD, I sell CDs too at uh, p www.pierx records with a Z at the end, R E C O R D Z. Dot com so that's where i sell i sell all my cds on one website and that's typically my merchandise sometimes people we'll sell some uh, music music merchandise like clothing and t-shirts on there but the, my clothing line is just called pyrex clothing it's just an okay. independent entity on its own yeah so you could go on either one of those for those and with the mute if you want to just buy digitally i'm on all the platforms and awax on spotify or um google play or any of those any platforms you listen to or title or whatever cool so I'm, I'm i'm pretty much everywhere on, on all that and um some a lot of mom and pop independent retailers will hold my cds and stuff i still for the people that still buy those i don't have any vinyl or anything but i'm pretty much everywhere bro and I, i'm putting out a lot of music right now a lot of a lot of the music i had like um I, I do a lot of work for other labels. I do a lot of my own official releases that come out through my label Pyrex or um, and one of my other, I have another label called Ilburn that I use and I, I used to be signed to, so I still am doing some work for that label. But, and then I just do a lot of work for higher features for compilations or different projects people do. So I have a ton of work that I do and I try and put the most effort into it as possible. Sometimes some of my work is older so i do work for some people or labels or compilations and they just sit on it for whatever reason mm -hmm. and then they put it out late in the game so sometimes i i don't really I, I like my most recent work i don't like songs that i did eight years ago coming out today typically but sometimes that happens yeah. as part of the game too so i'm I'm just working i'm, I'm working heavy i'm trying to, I, I set a goal for myself to put out at least four projects a year last year and that's double from my typical output so 
I'm trying to keep that goal on a four project minimum for the next couple of years and just keep growing as a musician and keep growing artistically and see see how far I can take it with, with these ideas and these songs. Yeah, I'm I'm looking forward to it, man. I know the fans are looking forward to it. And uh, for anyone that's interested in any of the things he was just talking about, I'm going to go ahead and link uh, all those different websites down below and make sure that you guys can connect with AWACS. You can go buy his uh, current releases. You can buy his current merch. And then as the announcements come uh, for Written in Blood in particular, which is, I know, what a lot of people are waiting for, I'm sure you'll be getting hit with all sorts of uh, promotion for that. Yeah, so it's cool. keep, keep an eye out. Written in Blood is coming. Is is it going to still be called Written in Blood? It is going to be called Written in Blood, but it won't be called AWAX and King Iso anymore. It'll just be called the Brazy, uh, the Brazy Bunch and Written in Blood. So the actual name spelling on the cover will be different. That, aside from that, it'll be the same. Okay. And I, and I know you had... When I heard the Brazy Bunch, I had already heard the song you guys did, you know, a few months back. Is that where that came from? Like, where where did that come from? Yeah, it, it was like, it was just an idea, you know, like, um, I so got the mental health matters and all, everything going on. And I got songs like I'll Be Fine and whatnot. And then it also goes with the, our street affiliations. It was like a merger. The whole name just made sense. And ISO came up with the name. He threw it to me. We were just throwing around titles, and I was like, oh, yeah, I like that. So we just – we both agreed on it, and then we asked uh, Travis his opinion, and he liked it. Everybody was with it. So we was like, man, let's go. Let's just do it. And then we could also, like – we could like pick up other people like there may be a who knows the brazy bunch part two tech may be a complete member for all, like the door the door is open for us to do a lot of things with this like we, we don't know where it's gonna go coming up we just know it's gonna keep getting better and bigger every time we do it too for sure for sure well do you have uh anything else you want to plug any uh anything you want to say to the fans here as we we start rapping uh, just the Brazy Bunch coming soon, man. Shout out uh, the, the whole strain. Shout out uh, Trav. Shout out Tech. And uh, I got a new solo project coming on the way. It's still, I'm still working out the title on that, but it, it's coming real soon. So um, appreciate all the fans. Appreciate you and, and all the vlogs and all the support and just all the interest in the album and all the good feedback on it. Hope everybody's uh, excited about it still coming out again and, and us putting this thing back up there absolutely man well i appreciate you coming on talking about this clearing the air and uh letting people know kind of what really happened behind the scenes and um yeah i think this is going to be huge so good luck to you good luck to the team and uh for now my name's joe k it's just another day in the underground see you guys next time